Okay. Well, it's uh, it's been a while since I put up a Netrunner video. It seems like a lot of people are into them. Uh, so, but I wanted to keep everyone waiting, right? You know, if I give you too many, maybe you won't be excited. Or I'm just lazy and really busy with New Year's type activities, and this is the first one I got around to. So, this is the monthly New York City Netrunner tournament at the Complete Strategist in Manhattan, New York City. I'm on the left, playing Kate, up against Wayland on the right. I'm going to show you both games in this match in one video. How about that? Sound good? Sounds good. January 2014, so uh, you know, you're going to see all sorts of you know, cards all the way into the spin cycle. I think True Colors is out for this tournament. Uh, came out like just the week before, so exciting. New cards, net running. Wayland starts off with a GLC. He showed you his hand uh, before the match started. And actually coming into this, this is this is a four-round tournament, low turnout because of the weather. Um, in the first round, I split Corpse 1. Second round, I split Corpse 1. This is the third round of four. Uh, my opponent won... One round, I, I one game, one game, um, and then went to time on another game. So he's like got, I guess one prestige point less than me at this point. So he was like he was joking about that hand he showed the camera, um, which I guess had no ice, right? <laughs> well, that way we can now see that. Um, and uh, I was like, we're not gonna win this, right? Just you know, do whatever you're gonna do. But I guess I slightly convinced him to keep yeah. a bad hand. Um, you know, that's... I kind of feel bad for saying that, um, seeing as how it turned out. But, yeah, so I, he's got open servers, so I drop a data sucker to load up on tokens. I sure gamble in case I have to pay to trash anything. I dirty laundry to get money while running. Uh, I trash uh, Jackson Howard that I found. Um, letting him keep the one that's already on the table, because, you know. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> and R&D was open. I could have scored points. I'm not going to try to trash a Jackson Howard when I can score points. So I guess he's still not drawing ice, uh, but I have to be wary of the scorch possibilities. Oh. Okay, he's drawn big with Jackson, right? And he, and he doesn't install a lot of ice, um, or any at all. So Scorch is definitely on my radar, right? Uh, I have to make sure that the after, if I run successfully, that at the end of that turn, the number of credits he has, uh, first of all, I have to have a four or five cards in my hand, and second of all, the number of credits he has can be no more than five greater or six, I have a link, so I guess six greater than the number of credits that I have. Otherwise, he scores double scorch. It's going to hit me in the face. Okay, so I cleared out the Jackson that he had already. Don't want to let him use it later. Draw my hand back up for safety. Letting him keep his shuffle. Okay, what's gonna happen now? What is gonna happen now? It's gonna be interesting. Hostile takeover. Bad pub. Oh yes, bad pub. Bad pub. Bad pub is so good. Nice. Run an R and D. That's a card in the trash. So we're running R and D. Because of the power It is Grim. A Grim. Whoa! Just to kill my data sucker. It's like, okay, kill my data sucker. And I get another bad pub. Oh, I get another bad pub. And I get to access R and D. So look, this is one thing I love in Netrunner. Is basically as runner working. The, the corp as hard as I can without using anything, right? It's like, how much can I do to them without, you know, using any cards? Um, 
Okay. I saw R&D. I checked the HQ. I saw a Scorch. I checked the money to make sure I don't die. Right? I'm running HQ again. Um, he reses a Roto turret. See, look at that. Because I didn't install any programs, all his program trashing is off. Right, so his Grim, he basically spent five and a bad pub, and gave me a bad pub, in exchange for no protection whatsoever, um, on R and D. Right, uh, he killed one data sucker. It's like, yeah, I have a clone ship now. I can just get that back if I ever need it. Um, okay, double hedge fund. So now I really have to worry about that scorch uh, possibility. But I'm gonna check R and D anyway, because it's open. Points, Atlas, can't get better than that. Run again, nothing. Oh, it's a troubleshooter. I trash it with the bad pub. Run again. All right, he keeps that. Yeah, he doesn't quite have enough money to kill me. And am I dead? It's po I guess it's possible I could have died here. Let's see, I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a link, so ten. He would need... Uh, 10 credits, uh, plus a link, so 11 credits, plus 6 for the Scorches. So he would need 17 credits. I think he's got, like, 15. Um, so yeah, just barely escaped death right there. If you don't have enough credits to avoid the Scourge, don't run successfully. All right, here he goes. Install. What's he going to install? Install. Advance. Ooh, okay, so he's gone down in credits, which actually means I'm safer. Uh, if I was safe last turn and he hasn't gained credits, I'm safe this turn if I haven't spent any. So let's uh, let's run that remote, right? If he spends money resing the ice, then less chance. Okay, so he spends two on a chimera. Good. So I can't die because his money went down. Cool. Um, even if that's a posted bounty, he would have to advance it twice, and then he can only scorch once. So I'm not. I don't really feel an urgent need to go get it. I'll check my free R and D. Take that. <laughs> two atlases. Not looking good for Whalen. Check R and D again. It's free. I'm checking it. I'll take that too. Oh, a posted bounty. And I will check R&D again. Keep that. All right, five free points. <laughs> Just program trashing alone. I mean, I guess he's preventing me from, yeah, de-res that camera. It's preventing me from using a medium or anything like that, but. Okay, so the green levels. Oh, puts another ice on R&D. Wait, 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 no, he's moving it. Okay. So he green leveled, put an ice on the remote. Think, I think he knows I can get through the Chimera. Um, and I run R&D and that's it. <laughs> wah, wah. It was a posted bounty. So there you have it. You can't leave nothing but a Grim on R&D. Right? Um, that's the lesson to learn in this game is program trashing, right? Program trashing is a thing that is on or off, right? So if you're a corp and you have program trashing ice, especially ice, such as Ichi, Grim, uh, Archer has end the run, so Archer doesn't count. Rototart has end the run, so that doesn't count. But ice that mostly purely trash programs, Burke bugs, right? Those ice are worthless if the runner has no programs. So they are in the early game even though you can res a Burke Bugs, it doesn't do anything because the runner has no programs. They're just running naked. And if you're a runner, try to get as much done as you can naked. If you don't need programs to get in, don't install any programs. Just run and get all these free accesses. You can see pressure the corp a whole lot in the early game. You know, build your economy. Use things like, you know, dirty laundry or, or uh, you know, sure gambles and... You know, non, you know, some resources maybe to make economy. Set up all, you know, those support parts, you know, and don't, 
you know, install breakers and start spending your money until the corp really forces you to do so. Um, and once in a while, you'll get just like an easy win like that. And, you know, even if you don't get the easy win, usually the way my games go is, is I'll put lots of pressure without installing anything as a runner. So maybe score a point or at least force the corp to res a ton of ice and spend all their money to res all their end the runs. Um, and then I'll install, you know, the biz. And I get a rig going and start, you know. And the thing is, it'll be so much easier to install my rig more efficiently because I've seen the ice they've res. So I know, you know, which tools I need to install first and I can prioritize and plan because of all that early game naked reconnaissance. The only times that doesn't work, uh, I mean, it works super well against Waylon. It works really well against HB. Against NBN, it works if you have some way to get lots of money, because those or Link, because their traces might screw you up uh, and do things to you. And against Jinteki, don't do that. <laughs> against Jinteki, do not just go around face checking without anything installed, because you'll get net damaged all over the place. <laughs> you should at least, I mean, you know, install a Deus Ex, and then you can do that, or a net shield or something. Okay, I'm flipping the board. I managed to talk for the entire time between the two games of the round uh, about the first game. So I don't have to make any cuts or edits. Uh, make it really easy to upload this video to YouTube. I'll just ex export and export and go. Um, yeah, while this game's getting started, I do want to mention a lot of people ask me in every video about the tokens I use, right? So... Uh, the tokens that I've used in every other video are pirate coins. There was a Kickstarter for pirate coins. If you just go and search for pirate coin Kickstarter, you'll see it, right? Uh, these other tokens that I'm using were also a Kickstarter. Um, I forget what they were called. Fut if you search for, yes, futuristic... Metal coins or victory tokens, right? Also on Kickstarter. That's what those things are with the numbers on them. So, uh, what I've done now is because now I've Kickstarted way more coins than I'm ever going to need for Netrunner. Uh, I'm going to use the ones with the numbers for credits, and I use the pirate coins for things like virus counters and whatnot. So, anyway, got a nice NBN game going here. Uh, he plays a sure gamble to get money. Uh, he face checks my Caduceus, which is like the best MBN ice in the world. I pump the money trace to five. He spends four credits plus his link, so I don't get the money. So I lose my three credits. I'm down to just two. Um, but at least it cost him his basically whole sure gambles worth of money uh, to do that. And I ended the run, kept him out of R&D with the Caduceus. He drops the daily casts, and the game begins. Okay, I installed an ice and took two credits. Pretty slow roll, this NBN. Pretty slow roll. He's drawn cards. He's drawn cards. He's taking monies. Draw, take a credit. And pro contacts. Okay, so you can see really the difference here, right? Is you know he was checking, you know, fit my stuff without any programs installed. He still doesn't need programs installed. The difference is is that my ice did something to him, right? It, it punished him in some way. I was either a going to get a free res on that caduceus and get my money back, or he was going to spend four credits, right? Whereas his grim. It's like, okay, you trashed my data sucker. Oh, your roto turret. All it did is cost you four credits, right? Ice wall. Okay, that didn't do anything to him, but it only cost me one, right? He res the roto turret for four. Yeah, he did have ice walls. <laughs> it's a Wayland deck. He had ice wall. He wasn't dumb, but it's just that's that's just what happens, right? Is the you know the, the early game ice are huge. Uh, the effect that they have, you know, throughout the rest of the game. If you, you know, you think about, like, why, how come you always see Enigma more than Data Pike, right? Well, you think, well, Enigma's, Enigma's not as good because Data Pike can, you know, res that on the first turn. will do more damage, 
and you know Enigma. Uh, a lot of people will run on the last click, ignore the click subroutine on Enigma, and just um, where you can't ignore the subroutine on Datapike. But Yog doesn't care which one you're using. Not that that matters. Um, but spending one more credit to res the data pike versus the enigma for the corp matters a ton, right? So being able to get cheap, effective, and the run ice uh, is super huge for any corpse game. Okay, he's, he's just going right out, parasiting my ice wall off the bat. No. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take money. I'm going to let that ice wall... If he's going to parasite an ice wall, that's, he's going to parasite an ice wall, right? It's it's not for me to try to stop that. It's not worth it. <laughs> I'm just going to play my game. Take money. Defend R&D a little more. All right, now that I see he has a parasite coming. Um, okay, yeah. I'll just throw the ice away and replace it. Am I going to replace it? I have to replace it. Oh, no. It was, it was his turn, and it died. Okay, it's his turn. It just died. He ran. There was a Sand Sand. He paid five, right? So look at that. I didn't res the Sand Sand. He just paid five. So Sand Sand City Grid. I didn't get to use it. It got trashed. Not the greatest thing in the world. Here he runs. Caduceus doesn't have money. I get my money back. Oh, yes. I didn't have to boost the trace because he's broke. Um, but basically, it was install Sand Sand. Runner loses five credits. How beautiful is that? <laughs> Except wizard. <laughs> okay, so he installs an R&D interface, but R&D's kind of closed right now. Um, and I got mad money. Look at all these transactions. Hedge fund. Money. Ooh, that's a nice hand I got going on there. He's pro-contacting, pro-contacting, pro-contacting. <laughs> Daily cast clone chip. All right, so see, this is, you know, sort of the opposite of the last game, right? In the last game, the corp was stuck in the early game, right? Uh, you know, and in the early game, the corp is weak, can't keep... You know, can't even keep the runner out if the runner doesn't have anything. In the mid game, the corp sort of blocks things up. The runner doesn't have a full rig yet, can't really get in everywhere. The corp can make some things happen. So, what I've done is I've basically, with all those these cheap ice, Caduceus's ice walls, I basically pushed it into the mid game almost immediately. Like, how many turns have we played? Like, not many. Um, also, I've kept the runner really, really poor, even though he's got a pro contacts and daily casts. Right? I've kept him way poor. He's had to spend all his money to keep me from doing even worse. You know, look how much money I have. If that sand sand was still on the table, I could just score an agenda right now if I had one. Boom. Right? So he needed to spend that money. Otherwise, he'd be in deep doo-doo. Uh, and, you know, now he should be installing programs. Um, but he isn't. Right? Because he doesn't have the monies. I guess he's got a parasite out there. But he's slow rolling the parasite. He's not even like using a data sucker to rush in and blow that caduceus up. He's just waiting it out. He's pumping his pro, contacting his professional friends to get more cards and more credits to make something happen. I mean, the pro context has maybe paid for itself by now, but it hasn't made him a huge profit, really. Um, and that first daily cast in Sure Gamble got canceled out. I mean, the Sure Gamble was canceled out by one card, Caduceus, right? That was that was bigger than you think. Um, and it's like, even though he made me spend the three, it's like, I have all these transactions, um, you know, so including Sweeps Week, Hedge Fund, Beanstalk. So look, I'm back in the money. I got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, until they're 14, <laughs> right? He hasn't been able to make me spend any monies, at least not a lot. But I've been able to make him spend pretty much everything. 
can solve that R&D interface when he can't get into R&D. That's, you know, that also cost him four credits, right? You could see that. Unless, like, you're already in, I would spend money on things that get you in before I spent money on things that make getting in more powerful. So, Jackson Howard's time has come. Throwing some cards out, drawing some cards out of the deck. And the parasite continues to eat away at my caduceus. Oh, here, uh, he forgot to discard down to five at the end of his turn, so he discarded two. But then he realized, oh, he only had to discard one. So he threw away a Deus Ex and kept his extra pro contacts. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I guess theoretically, because of NBN, you know, a resource could get trashed. Uh, and if he really wants his pro contacts, that's the one to keep. Okay, what's he going to do? He's got an SMC, and he's got the Parasite, and he has a little bit of money. So if he's got a cheap Breaker, a nice Mimic, um, you know, he can get through Caduceus with Mimic. There's pretty much nothing better out there to use. Uh, let's see, two for SMC, three, f two for Mimic because he's Kate, so four credits, and then two to get in. So for six credits, he can he can just run right into HQ. Um, and depending on what ice is on R and D, he might be able to get in there too with his R and D interface. He's probably gonna wait for the Caduceus to die, so he runs where the Jackson Howard is. I raise a Draco for. I'm gonna leave it at strength zero, right? I mean. He's got an SMC. Um, you know, I kind of want money more than I want to pester him with a really strong Draco. And really, my thinking was is that a strength zero Draco is like parasite bait. I see that he, he's already played two parasites. He is all about parasites, um, at least as far as I can tell. So uh, I'm like, yes, please use up one of your parasites. You know, I will pay one credit and one Draco to make you waste an entire parasite, right? It's one less parasite recursion you're gonna get, and then I'll put out some other ice, um, you know, that you won't be able to parasite because you used one. But he didn't, he brought out a mimic. Uh, so I'm gonna use my Jackson Howard, and I'm gonna bring back a San Santa hedge fund, obviously. I'm hem-hawing about the third card. I don't know if this is the right choice. You know, Beanstalk, Sweeps Week. Like, a Sweeps Week has the potential to make more money than a Beanstalk, but on average, you know, they're basically the same. I chose the Ice Wall, and that was part of my thinking going along with the Sacrificial Draco. Is like, you know what? The ice Wall costs one. I already have monies on the table. Do I really need that much more? Um, I'll bring the Ice Wall. That way, if he's really all about parasites and such, um, you know... I want to take an ice back. I don't have a zillion ice. Um, so if I put another ice wall out, <laughs> he'll have to, um, you know, parasite again. And every recursion, you know, is going to cost him. It's going to cost him a clone chip. It's going to cost him whatever. He only has so many. Uh, so once they're all used up, uh, it'll be looking pretty good for me. But I guess he has break. At that point, I knew he also had breakers. He wasn't parasite only. He's got a mimic. But, you know, he's so poor. If I can make him break instead of letting him get in for free, right? Okay, so there's a pop-up window. Tink! I get my credit. And I don't think he's not going to pay to go through the pop-up window. So he basically just gave me a credit and then spent a credit to kill off the ice wall, right? See, he's got, he really wants R&D open, so, and look, it's, he managed, look at that, with just, you know, some parasites, he managed to clean it out, but, but doom re-iced, see, I see what's going on here, he parasited R&D wide open to try to get the lock, uh, so I re-iced it, double, right? and then put something in the remote. So now it's like, okay, you used up 
How many parasites? And you want to go to R&D again? Nope. Oh, here's a remote. You have to go here. And there's a Draco in your way. And you just used up your parasites. You have a Mimic. You could break it for one. But it's like, yeah, please spend your almost no money. I have drained you of so much monies. You spent all your monies on these various things. You're not getting a lot. You're just getting daily casts and pro contacts. You don't have the flood of cash. Another SMC. Uh, he's running that remote. I, I teased him with that face down card. Pays one to break the Draco with his Mimic. I think that's a TMI, right? And I'm sitting here looking at my money, and I don't need to res that TMI. Also, would I be able to res it? How much would it cost me? How many credits does he have, right? So. Uh, I'm just going to use the Jackson Howard that's in there. I'll take back the pop-up window and some transactions, right? Again, using that same logic, like, wow, he used a whole parasite recursion to take out this pop-up window. I'll try to bring it back from the dead, yeah. I will definitely do that. But I've used two Jacksons already uh, here in this situation. So there's only one left. Um which is going to hinder my card draw, right? Yeah, a lot of people who play MBN, they put in green level clearance. I put in Beanstalk because I'm figuring, hey, Jackson Howard gives me the card draw, right? I don't need, I'd rather get the one more credit from Beanstalk than the one more card from green level. Um, the problem is if you don't have Jackson Howard, your card draw goes away. But hopefully you have enough money that you can just draw, 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 draw regularly um, if you really have to, as I'm doing here. Draw. <laughs> And even more transactions, sweep, sweep, hedge fund. So, look at, look how much I've been able to defend while hardly spending any money, yet draining the runner's economy by a lot. All right, not only credits, but clicks. You had to spend a click, run it, and a credit to run that Jackson Howard. And you had to spend a lot of cards to bring those parasites back. Okay, another clone ship and run R and D. Okay, Viper, I love this. Be thanks, right? So because I replaced green level clearance uh, with sweep sweep, uh, I was freed of three influence that way, and I chose to upgrade what was formerly three enigmas into three vipers, which is a, Yog isn't big enough to take t care of Viper, so on its own at least, maybe there's an ice carver or who knows what else, data sucker tokens. But at least the runner will need something else besides Yag alone. It costs the same to res. And watch this, right? This is the real greatness of the Viper. Is that because, you know, if, they, if it was an Enigma, right? Then the runner would just lose a click and end the run. It'd be like, oh, okay. But I don't, I don't care if they lose a click and end the run, right? I'd rather, I in this situation, I would much rather have the runner spend... You know, lose credits, then lose a click and end the run. So look at this. Then the lose a click, it's trace three. Both traces are three. So it's like trace three to, you know, lose a click. He spent two credits and he has a link built in to avoid losing that click. That was, that's great for me. It's like, yes, look how much money you're losing. Oh, yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, you know, he could have brought that parasite out later. It was, I don't know how necessary it was to bring it out immediately. Um, but yeah. Oof. Another hedge fund. Wow. Money. Much money. Okay. I put something in the remote. I put in better ice on top of the Draco. Uh, and I played a hedge fund. So. Alright, so now thanks to that parasite, if he has a Yog, uh, he can go right through that Viper now because the strength is decreased by one but think about that because it's strength four it takes just that one little bit more to, to parasite it dead but i paid the same exact number of credits to res it as i would have for an enigma oh here there was a there was a situation here where see so he's test running yog 
uh, but he doesn't have enough memory, right? Because it's Mimic is one, two, three for self-modifying code, four for Parasite, and Yag would be five. So he's actually changing his mind, and I'm letting him do this. I didn't have to, um, right? He's tight on memory. He's going to use the self-modifying code first. I'm not sure. I mean, was that first click a test run, or was, did he do something else in the first click, like pro contacts or something? Um, I don't know. But yeah, he uses, regardless, he may have lost a click. I wasn't looking closely enough. Um, but he SMCs the Corroder for three credits total, which doesn't cost a click. Then he test runs the Yog. So look, he's got a full rig now. All right, full rig. Went from no rig to full rig. His Yog can just fly through my Viper. Look at that. If that was an Enigma, he wouldn't have needed that Parasite. He wouldn't have had those memory troubles, right? That's such a huge upgrade. For one influence, Viper is, is amazing. Especially in NBN where you can boost those traces. Um, And that's that's the tricky thing about the trace game, right? Is when you boost a trace, it's like sometimes you want to just boost it so he can't beat it no matter what. And sometimes you want to boost it so that he's it's close and he's gonna waste all he's gonna beat the trace but he's gonna drain his money. And it's like, great, I would much rather have you lose two credits than lose a click. Okay, so yeah, because he spent all his money and all that other stuff, I was able to res this TMI easily. Another case where the ice is really cheap to res. It costs the same as a wall of static, but the strength is higher by two. Why? Because of the trace shenanigans, right? That's the power of NBN two recurring credit for traces, is that tracing ice and traces in general, right? They weaken. You know, if something has a trace, there is no question. It's weaker, because it can be broken by someone with no programs and no nothing, just money. Someone could have a deck of all money and beat all your traces, but... If you use traces, you basically get, and they work, you get more for your money, right? You get a five strength barrier instead of a three strength for the same price. Can't install that parasite, Mr. No Memory. You, know, you get a four strength code gate instead of a three strength. And as I said many times already, and as you can see is evidenced by this game, the true power of traces is that they entice the runner to spend money beating them as opposed to spending money getting things, right? It's like, look, that Corroder, oh, here we go. Okay, I scored out a Beal with that Sand Sand because I was loaded. And now I'm not loaded anymore. <laughs> uh, I think I've got eight credits left. Something, yeah. Viper's going down. It's going down. Install and tap Katie Jones. I need some moves, brother. Can you get me a move? Let the runner win traces, but make that expensive. Don't let him win traces for nothing. It's also a meta play. Nobody plays heavy link. I don't think anyone I know plays a lot. I think one guy I know has a, a deck with link. He plays Andromeda. It is one helpful AI, which is a connection uses hostage to get helpful AI, and he uses hostage to get underworld contacts um, with Andromeda. So his deck has two link. That's the most link I know anyone who plays. Um, so if you play traces and people aren't playing link, the most link you're going to see is the one link built into the identity of Kate, uh, Reyna, Andromeda, right? Exile. And that's probably the only link you're going to come across. So... You know, that makes Traces stronger when no one's playing Link. Okay, everyone's favorite new card, RSVP. So look at this. There's an RSVP in front of the Draco. RSVP is a strength 4 code gate that reses for 3. 
that means that he can't break that Draco behind it, right? Suddenly, what was a crappy Draco of strength zero is now awesome because he can't even break it with his mimic, um, right? And that card that was installed in that he he hit the RSVP, let the RSVP fire, and jacked out, so we didn't have to deal with what was behind it. Um, the card that was installed there was a character assassination, and I killed that Katie Jones just when he was about to get money. Just when he was about to get money, he played a sure gamble, filled up a Katie Jones. I shot that down, right? Money denial. Okay, I guess his parasiting days are over. He's still low on memory, um, but he's now got a data sucker, right, to go along um, yeah, with everything else. So he runs HQ, which he can get into for two credits. He sees a closed accounts, I believe. I think I had like three closed accounts in my hand. Um, but I didn't have any uh, breaking newses to go along with it. So he hit HQ, he got his data sucker, and now that he has a data sucker, he can run the remote. Right? Uh, he can also run through a Viper if he sees one. Yep, he's going to run the remote, use a data sucker plus Yog to get through RSVP, spend one credit to take care of the Draco with his Mimic. Now there's a TMI. So here's the thing. I can res TMI. If I res TMI, I'll spend three credits. I only have four. And he will have to beat the trace, which, you know, he could beat. But if he beats the trace to de-res the TMI, he won't have enough left to trash Sansan. San. So I could, that would, I could basically res TMI. It wouldn't stay resed. My money would go down, but Sansan San would stay there. Uh, because... I had another sand sand in my hand, which I just installed. I was more than happy to let him pay five to trash that one, right? If I had, like, an agenda I wanted to score immediately the next turn, especially in Astro Script, maybe I would have res the TMI to keep him uh, from trashing the sand sand. Um, but, you know, he could have... That would have enticed him to just basically do the same thing again, right? So here, look, he's running again. And... Checking archives because he wants to see if he can get free data suckers there. I'll res another Caduceus over there. So that means I'll have to spend two credits. Yep. There's nothing in there. It's another Draco. Uh, he'll have to spend two credits to get the data sucker token. And I basically don't want to let him load up in free data suckers, so might as well put an end to that as early as possible. See, and actually he chose there to spend two credits to get a data sucker token, right, uh, on archives. I guess he also wanted to see the card in archives. But if you think about it, it's like he could have just let me get the free res on the Caduceus and just let it be. He would have saved two credits, um, you know. He would have let me keep three. Uh, see, look at that. He runs. The remote to check the face down card, it's another sand sand which he can't afford to trash. It's like, would he rather, and he, he used up his data sucker. <laughs> I guess he really wanted to check the remote, right? I guess, it could have been an Astro script, right? It could have been trying to sneak one out. Um, so it wasn't the worst idea in the universe. Right? I mean, if that was an Astro script and I was trying to sneak it out, he would have been in really bad shape, so. I guess even though, and that's what MBN does, right? It's like, you know, it's not always, uh, haha, I tricked you into draining all your money. It's like, no, look, you had to, you know, your, your best bet for checking that remote was running archives. And then coming in, um, you know, with your data sucker Yag and then your one credit mimic, right? That was the best chance to check that potentially game, almost effectively game winning card for me. had to do it. He had to be drained or be in great danger. All right, I'm going to install and take two credits. That's the sand sand with something on top of it. And I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine credits. So that is enough to res a sand sand and use it. 
right? Because you need six to res the Sand Sand and two to advance a card. And I've got a card already on the Sand Sand, so. We don't make rules. He just lives here. Right, he's got some daily casts going on. He's got some pro contacts going on. He's going to run HQ, right? My hand is loaded with cards. Um, it costs him two to get in. Can't blame him. And I think he sees another closed accounts because I think I still have three in my hand. <laughs> And he's going to run the remote, right? Using the data sucker he just earned, same deal. And this time, now that he's down to almost no credits, right, on the at the at that part of the run, I'm going to res the TMI because it's basically a guaranteed res, and I don't want him to touch that card that's back there. And there isn't much he can do about it. But he did, because I had to spend three on that TMI, I only have four, five, six now. So I can't use my Sand Sand. But I still want to use this Breaking News. So Advance, Advance. He's tagged right now because of Breaking News. So I can only trash one of the cards. If he didn't make me spend three on the TMI, I could have trashed his Pro Con and his uh, Daily Casts. Right? But instead, I'm just going to trash Daily Casts. I think that was the right choice. Um... Because Procon really doesn't help him get a bunch of money in a hurry, which is what it, you know Daily Cast sort of does, more so than Procon. Uh, and that's what he needs, right? He needs a bunch of money in a hurry. To trash the Sand Sand, he's going to have to click that Procon for like, you know, a whole turn or more. Um, but with Daily Casts, you know, he'd be all set to trash that. Um, uh, oh, so he got a membership and now he can Parasite. So he's putting the Parasite on the R&D TMI, which is going to take a while, but he's got some data suckers, so uh, maybe it won't take quite as long. Well, I'm just going to take three, and so what I'm doing here is I have five points, right? I have a Beal, a character assassination, and a breaking news. I just need to score a single two-point agenda. Uh, I've... You know, you know in my deck there's there's plenty of two three for two point agendas. There's Beals and Astro scripts, and I have a sand sand on the table. So if I get six, seven, eight credits, um, and I have one of those three for two agendas in my hand, of which there are four in the deck. Uh, no, there's five left in the deck. Five such cards. Uh, then I win pretty much immediately because I res sand sand and score. So he knows this. I know this. I've got five credits. Um, he's got no points. He's got to get seven points before that happens. There you go. I've got the eight credits. Okay. Fifteen minutes left in the round. The TMI is slowly dwindling. You know. See, he needed a bunch of money in a hurry to stop me. Trashing the daily cast was the right move. All right, he's got an, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's got two mem chips. So now he's got double data sucker. That is going to hurry him up a bit. He runs HQ. I think at this point, there might be three closed accounts and two Astro scripts in my hand, right? <laughs> um, so I guess the odds were, even if he took one of the Astro scripts, I didn't even care because I had another one, right? I guess he could have run HQ twice and gotten lucky. <laughs> He's got his two data suckers there. It's still not enough to take out the TMI completely, but it is enough. Yep, he's going to run R&D. I know that no matter what, he can't win on this run, so I don't even care. Right, I don't res. I need to keep the money so I can win, because it's the eight credits I need to win. He didn't even get anything. Uh, and res Sansan, San and it's over. MBN 
is tough to beat. <laughs> yep, see, I'm showing him that I had three closed accounts and two Astros grids. It is tough to beat. I think if you played Link, like just some rabbit holes, you could beat this deck actually rather easily. Um, because then a lot of those ice become really worthless, right? It becomes almost, it comes really hard to res TMI. Three Caduceus, three Vipers suddenly become, you know, nearly worthless. Draco becomes almost worthless, right? So that's six, like ten ice in the deck, right? More than half the ice in the deck are tracing ice. Suddenly, you play three rabbit holes and you've canceled out almost all of them, right? Uh, I only have the one RSVP. <laughs> Three of the ice in the deck are pop-up windows, so those don't even count. So what's going to keep you out? Ice wall. <laughs> I think ice wall will keep you out yeah, if you have three rabbit holes. But no one plays them, right? And that is why, you know, this is so brutal, 7-0, right? Is because people don't play Link. And basically, you know, it's like, hey, if I can make something that has one weakness, and that weakness is something no one is using... Then that's gonna be that's gonna you know be ridiculously strong. If you just play some Link, it's ridiculously weak. So yeah, uh, you know think about what people in your area don't think about what they are doing and try to counter it, right? Think about what they're not doing, right? They're not using Link, or maybe no one near you is using Scorch, or, right? Then make a deck. Don't make a deck that's like strong against the popular thing because not everyone plays the popular thing. Make a deck that is only weak against the thing that nobody, absolutely nobody is doing. Nobody plays Link. The deck is only weak to Link. Really powerful. You know, it's sort of, you know, if anyone watches football, right? That's, uh, you know, Peyton Manning does a lot of similar things. Um, you know, in terms of how he sets up the offense, right? He's like, okay, um, you know, where, you know, my, I'm only weak to, you know, these one things, things that nobody are doing, right? Yeah, we're going to, you know, I'm weak against uh, a blitz, and then I'm going to mitigate that one weakness, right? That's, that's the true, right? It's like if I, if you're weak against Link and people are playing Link, then you throw in some Foxfire, and now... Now the game is cooking, right? People wonder cards like Foxfire, why are they even in the game? That's why. If you make a deck that's weak to only one thing, and then people start playing that one thing, but you still want that deck to be viable, there are cards out there like Foxfire that will just attack Link directly. Or, you know, a card like, if you're weak to viruses, play Cyberdex Trial. All right. Enjoy your net running. I'm done.